Today I had the pleasure of getting together with longtime friend and retired Paralympian Joey Johnson. Joey had been on a few months ago regarding a few things happening in the Paralympic world and Joey brought with him George Bates. Bates who wears the number eight is a class four five from Great Britain. He's 26 years old and he has competed for nearly 10 years. He's been a very busy athlete playing overseas in Europe and representing his country as well as club play. Just recently, a lot of chaos was created for athletes like George when he was shocked to hear of a recent change to the wheelchair basketball classification system, which is going to deem him ineligible from playing competitive basketball. You can say what you want about disabilities. I find this topic extremely interesting right now given the new mindset that we all have as a society surrounding inclusion and supposedly athlete-centered sports worlds. Uh, so I had the opportunity to sit down with these two gentlemen and uh, have a pretty decent conversation. I hope you enjoy. And we're live and welcome to the Here We Are podcast or vodcast or I don't know what, what the heck I'm going to call it. I'm here with Joey Johnson and George Bates from the Great Britain wheelchair basketball team. And uh, if you're not in the know with Paralympic sport right now, there's a lot of changes happening. Depends on what side you're on or what your opinion is, whether you agree with them or not. But I just wanted to have a, a discussion here with some legitimate basketball players that live in that world and are affected by it. And George is one of them. Um, and I'm going to kind of leave it to Joey and I'll be somewhat of a moderator because I don't want to have three people talking the whole time. And uh, you guys know how much I'll talk. But uh, Joey, if you want to just do a brief intro for for George and and just kind of what's going on and and just what's what's changed over the course of the couple months that we've last talked. Yeah. Um, well, George, I met George uh, a few years ago when I was the assistant coach with the British men's team. Um, and he was a program player at that time. So it's kind of neat because I, I wouldn't say I got to see him grow up, but I got to see him make the team. I was with George in his first um, senior competition with the GB program, the European Championships in 2017. George is a great guy, very similar player to uh, how I played the game and stuff. So I could relate to him a lot that way. And I got to share a lot of my knowledge and, and, and a lot of my stories with him as far as how to uh, be the best big man on the court that he possibly could be. Um, and unfortunately, due to these recent uh, decisions made by IPC and IWBF, uh, George is left out in the cold right now. He, he was one of the the unlucky few that were deemed ineligible to proceed um, playing wheelchair basketball at the, the Paralympic level. So I don't know if George wants to step in here and tell us a little bit more about himself and his history. Be yeah, great. so uh, at 11 years old, I had an accident playing football or, or soccer for you guys, if, if that's what you want to call it. If that's what you insist on calling it, then I'll, I'll call it that. And um, I've got a condition called complex regional pain syndrome. And it essentially means that I'm in my left leg, I'm in constant like nerve pain like all the time. But from that, I've obviously had for 15 years, I use a, a crutch to walk and stuff like that. So I've got other issues with the leg from not weight bearing properly and, and stuff like that. And as Joey said, I broke into the men's team in 2017. Um, and from there, I've, I've been in it ever since. And we're fortunate enough to to win the world championships and then obviously qualify for Tokyo last year. And then obviously in January, when the news came out about the IPC, removing uh, wheelchair basketball from the Paralympics if they didn't adhere to, to their rules. I was always going to be a little bit nervous as my condition says it has pain in it. So their rules is that that doesn't count. But obviously I went to doctors and stuff and I've got uh, muscle wastage, loss of muscle power, loss of passive range of movement, and they are two boxes of it. So I wasn't as concerned because the doctors are saying that I've got these problems which fit in to to their classification so i thought that 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 would be all right and the process was was a long one it was obviously supposed to be released in may but because of corona and stuff like that it, it, it was extended but it was supposed to be released then in june june 17th and my association got an email of all the british athletes and what and what their result was and my name just wasn't on the list i wasn't there whether they needed more info or it was a no it just wasn't there so they contacted the IWF to say, look, where's where's George's name? He's not on there. And they basically admitted that they would forgot to send my stuff to the IPC in the first place. So, I mean, they'd had it for six months and, and never sent it off. Uh, <sighs> my, I, I know they don't want to change the rules. I, I really do agree with their classification system. I do. But the way that's handled for me wasn't good. Like six months, seven months of my livelihood, not knowing what's going to go on. And then you, 
in lockdown with pandemics and things like that. It's not, yeah, it's not, not to mention your mental health as well. Like, yeah, it's not it's not the easiest thing to to kind of deal with. But as you know, Joey, I've got a good sort of support network around me and stuff. So I'm very lucky in the sense that I have that. And then last week I I got my I finally got my result back and it was I'm deemed ineligible. And reading through my papers, it kind of really confused me because it says you do have these other issues of the loss of power, loss of passive range of movement, which does fit in to, to their to their categories. But because it's from your condition, it doesn't count, which doesn't really make any sense to me. Like no matter You're how still experiencing it happens, the pain, yeah. But no matter how it happens, I have these other things aside from my condition, which is my view. Then just mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter if I was kicked by a horse or, or whatever like you use a cane yeah yeah I you can't, you're not like doing you're not no. you're not shooting jump shots anytime soon <laughs> no i can't i literally you don't use, do that in a wheelchair either He's, yeah no, i'm struggling at all ends of that <laughs> um, but, yeah but it takes your legs out of the equation though right so it's like i can't you I, love the sport because it's I so hard i can't play any able-bodied sport i have to use a crutch in every day like whether it's going to the shops or doing anything like i can't yeah. do that to tournaments, I'll take a day chair if it's a long walk. For a Paralympics, I'd take it because I just wouldn't be able to walk that far. Yeah. So I'm not going to compare to many people, but as amputees are more able to walk like with their prosthetic than I am. So I, I kind of really find it really difficult to accept that I'm registered disabled in my country. My doctors are telling me I'm disabled. Like, how could I not be involved in a disability sport? It's yeah. It's <laughs> well, it's weird, too, because things like that happen. I was talking to Tim Jones uh, a couple of weeks ago. He played on the U.S. sledge team like a long time ago. And he was telling me that he's got spina bifida. He couldn't get on disability, but he played for the Paralympic team. Yeah. But he couldn't qualify for disability. But yeah. he, and I'm like, I man, that's weird. It's it's backwards over here. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so do you mind me asking, like, is your disability going to get worse over time as you age? Or is it going to possibly stay about the same? Uh, it's probably going to get worse. So I've noticed kind of like, so my pain or where the condition mainly affects is to just above my knee. But I've noticed in the recent years, like my hip, my hips starting to go a little bit, just purely for the fact the way I've walked on like a crutch and, yeah. and stuff like that. So it will slowly progress. I'm sort of finding out I can walk like less and less kind of as the years have gone on, which is it like, I kind of knew that was, that was going to happen, but obviously you yeah. could have yeah. it which is the story that's obviously going around massively in the press at the minute. Uh, but there's, the risk of that is that uh, it's kind of like 50-50. A lot of people that have it gets rid of the pain. If they get but the other 50%, the pain just transfers to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so it's not as easy. It's kind of been sensationalized a little bit, but I, I'm not naive to think that that wasn't going to be the case. I mean, it's the press and they need to sell the stories and, but it is a genuine consideration. Like I could, I could, I could do it, and it's not. I, I used to say to some of my friends, just jokingly, that if Paralympic athletes ever made the kind of money that pro athletes made, that you would see people chopping their legs off. Yeah, you would. <laughs> well, I wish like, I was in that kind of money. <laughs> you no, know, I know, but it's just—it's funny because you look right now. What we have is it's a, it's a it's a clash of views, like and, and perspective on what it is that the Paralympics mean. I mean. And I think there's so many different kinds of um, ways that different people look at it. Like for the athletes, we live in the, in the world of the athlete. So we see that it's almost a business type world where it's about performance. It's about winning. It's about medals and training and keeping your spot just like any other sport. And then a lot of people look at the Paralympics and see it as an, a source of inspiration and motivation for society. And, you know, like usually wherever Paralympics is held, it changes that whole area, yeah. you know, in their mindset. Right. So you can't deny that, but it's just so weird now when you really look at disability, it's like such a gray area now. Cause you're like, now what is a real disability, yeah. you know? And to me, I used to look at invisible disabilities and, and not know. Cause like, I've never, I didn't know anybody that had, too many of them. I dated a girl that had one a while ago and, and learned a little bit that way. But like, I don't know. Um, do you know anybody else that, that plays club level or anybody coming up that's got similar disabilities like you that, that might be affected with this down the road as well in your program or like your club level? 
Uh, so there's some there's a there's a young GB kid that's like 16, 17, and he's got the same condition as me. And so he's just I actually coached him at Christmas because I had an injury, so I was back in the UK and the the GB juniors were playing against Spain. So I said I'd come down and and kind of coach and help the GB coach out. And uh, not that Hatch needs it, but yeah. <laughs> I kind of I sat there and agreed with whatever he said basically. Yeah. <laughs> and and he's messaged me and his family have messaged me. I mean, I've never spoken to his family, but they've got in contact because his career's not even started yet. And yeah. this is... Basically, he, it's over. Yeah, Do you want it, to tell him the the hard truth that he shouldn't pursue his dream? Oh, he can't tell you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Know, what, what do you say to someone like that? Like, this kid's gone through hell with the disability and stuff like that and the only like you said with the same situation with me and i listened to your interview yesterday joe the same with you like it really does get you through it when you like when oh, any disability when you still find something that you love and play it really does drag you out of like a pit of yeah. of where you were because you you become reclusive you sort of don't you can't do anything you can't do what your friends are necessarily doing you can't really well, do once as you knew it is it, changed dramatically and you yeah. don't know Ch change is uncomfortable at the best of times yeah. but when you throw a traumatic uh injury or a traumatic what event in your life yeah it it's, puts you in a pit puts you in a dark spot and i think i've talked to a lot of wheelchair basketball players about this um and i i bet you every one of us has stories like that like that feeling of the sense of belonging that the pat said in an interview that i saw the other day that it, basketball made him whole again he realized his athletic potential because of wheelchair basketball and now to have people like you and this young kid in the uk and however many other hundreds of kids out there that this is going to affect, it it really breaks my heart. And that interview I did yesterday with Rolt, I, I mentioned it. I was just uh, a few months ago, got uh, sent a message on Facebook from a mom in the U.S. whose son was just diagnosed with the same hip disease I have. And so they kind of Googled it and my picture popped up and they found out about wheelchair basketball that way. And um, her, her kid loves wheelchair basketball now. And if that were to be taken away from him, he, he's a nine-year-old, ten-year-old kid, whatever he is, like that, it's not right. It's just plain and simple, black and white. It's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember. I remember when I first realized that I wanted to be like that. I wasn't going to be able to achieve my dream. I think I was like super young, and I wanted to be in the NHL. I was destroyed when I heard about sledge hockey and that it was a Paralympic sport. And it was like very in line with what I wanted to do. It like opened up my whole world. Like it gave me a new identity and like to think that there's this whole new way that I could excel at a sport that I love. Um, and like even, I don't know, like even just for, for me who like who was born with a disability and finding it like, I don't want to play a watered down version of a sport. Like I want the challenge. I want the compete. Yeah. Right. Um, and that was, it's, it's just interesting. Cause like, there's so many different, like I said, there's so many different um, angles that everybody's coming at with this because it's like you, it's not, you know, it's unfair the way that they introduced the changes without letting you know properly left you hanging during one of the, the thing too is like this whole time is crazy. Anything that we're doing right now that's hard on anybody is adding more stress on top of what's already going on. So like they should have done nothing this month. Like they should have just left it alone as soon as COVID hit. Why are you making these big decisions now? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Just write it off. But like, I mean, tennis tennis are allowed to their athletes are allowed to compete wheelchair tennis and t at tokyo and then it kicks in afterwards yeah yeah my understanding with that though is tennis and this this is where i say that both iwf and ipc in my opinion uh, have some fault here i guess tennis put together a presentation showing the the phasing out stage where iwbf didn't and iwbf now this is just what i heard so i don't know what the actual truth is but um it's ridiculous like the for being athlete centric associations, supposedly, <laughs> they are both doing the yeah, they're both doing the exact opposite of what their mission statements say they're going to do. Like, why not put it off until right after Tokyo and then make a decision? And then at least we can have some healthy discussions about it. But um, IPC said that IWBF's been sitting on this since 2015, so they had to do something. Well, you don't do it yet. Like, <laughs> your trump card january of 2020 that was five six seven whatever months out of the paralympics no you don't do that it doesn't punish it doesn't punish it only punishes exactly, exactly. Like, like i just what have iwbf 
Uh, what punishment have they had? Like, I genuinely, they've lost nine players. Are they? I, I'm sure they are concerned about losing players because they do agree with their philosophy. But does it hit them that hard? No. Does it destroy nine people's lives? Absolutely. Like, Speaking I'm, of that, what, what, what's the future hold for you if, if things don't change? I know you have a pro contract. You're playing in Spain. Yeah. What, what's going on? I know. After you, if you're not disabled. <laughs> well, it, IWF, so they've opened the Euro Cup up to play at what your classification was, which is obviously handy as your like a Euro Cup. You've won however many of them, Joey, but uh, I need to win. I need to win one. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they're allowing their each individual league to decide what, like what classification to be basically like whether to go back to what it was originally or to change so it still is a little bit up in the air but i think i'm going to be all right to to play like in spain but i mean i'm a, is that an indefinite thing or is that just for the upcoming season no idea okay no idea but i mean i'll lose obviously if it, if i can't play for great britain i'll lose all my all my gb funding goes and if the only tournament I've ever wanted to win, and I grew up as a kid, wanted well from when I had my injury, wanted to win was the Paralympics. And where my motive, where my motivation goes from there, like I don't know. Like as much as I love winning other things, there was only one thing that I've always been like I would trade everything in to just win that that one medal. So where that leaves my motivation, if it does go down that route, I, I honestly don't know. And yeah, I, it's difficult because. I kind of chose not to go to university because I wanted to stay in the UK and progress in the in the British team. I had, I mean, Joey had sort of hooked me up with a few things in America that I turned down because if I'd have been there, I wouldn't have been able to train with the British team. And yeah. it had been four years sort of out of that team, which I couldn't really do. So I never really thought down the line that your disability <laughs> isn't yeah. right. So I, I didn't think, I thought it'd be injury or something that if something bad was going to happen, not you, you're not you're not, you're not well, you are disabled but not the right type we don't we don't really accept that so yeah. yeah i honestly don't know if that if everything's up in the air so i don't really know is it so is it ipc that had the final decision on this one that affected you so is it iwbf because i'm hearing so, that with dave it was iwbf and then it was an ipc but this one it was ipc so there's a real I've obviously there's been a lot of contact from press in the UK to the IPC because of my story and they obviously have to go and uh, like ask for comment uh, on their side. Yeah. And um, I've read uh yesterday an IPC reply basically saying that it was the IWF that made this decision. But the IWF's standpoint is obviously they're doing it to fit in with the IPC's right. classification so I kind of this is what I need to gather well, and, to uh, me that's an easy out for IPC they're pointing a finger saying IWBF made this decision but what they're not saying is if IWBF didn't make this decision we're not letting them come to the yeah, they're pressured into it so like I'm exactly like, yeah. quick point they're, they're, on it. they're forcing IWBF to make the decision because IWBF have never wanted to change clearly because that's why they've refused to to conform yeah. for for four, that's four, four on it for four years <laughs> yeah they just never wanted to do it yeah. uh so it is my grievance is with IWF's handling of it all, but not their not their decision. It's the IPC that I'm more annoyed and and, and angry with. It sucks because of the classification system for for everybody. That's because you're so handcuffed with you're trying to fit everybody into different. You know, like you can only have so many four fives. You can only have so many twos. You can. So it's like, but I think that's what makes it. That's what makes it better. Like. Every team, it's not, I don't understand with, say, swimming and, and sprinting where you're directly competing against someone to, like, you can't have, like, someone being really able and someone not being as able. Like, yeah. Because they'd obviously always win. But in the sport where every team is playing to 14, so it does, everyone's in the same constraints. Yeah. It, it, it needs to be looked at differently to an individual sport. Well, I mean, as far as, like, people, like, like because from the, the way that I look at it, like, there's only so many people you can take to 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 fill those roles for the classifications, right? Like for you, how many four or fives try out every every couple of years, or how often are your tryouts? Well, for the, well we're pretty heavy. We all know about that. We're pretty heavy on our, our four four fives. There must be. Yeah. So it's already hard enough for you to get in, though. Yeah. Like, oh, to make it. 
Oh, especially um, we're very fortunate in the British team for the fours and four fives that we've got. We've got a pretty, pretty yeah. talented bracket there. So <laughs> it is pretty difficult to get so in. You're disabled. You have constant pain. And yeah. that's not even that's not even a non fact. You're already you're classified as disabled. You're a yeah. four five who uh, is already you've earned your spot because you've beat everybody else for that position on top of it. You're sitting in a wheelchair, which takes your legs out of the equation anyways. Yeah. I don't understand why they couldn't just go, ah, he's disabled. He's disabled enough that he qualifies and that like, it's, it's just weird. Cause I just feel like, cause I know a lot of people in different sides. Like I know people that work with the IPC. I know people that work on all, with NSOs and all that. Like they're not, these people aren't horrible people. Like they're just trying to do their job. But I feel like this is just a learning process right now. Like we, we've learned now that trying to accommodate this classification system with, different rules and stuff throughout different sports with classifications getting messy. Like there might need to be some outside the box thinking here as far as like being a little bit more inclusive to other disabilities yeah. and not excluding them. Cause like, I don't know about like, cause our, for, for our program um, for sledge, it we're having a hard time finding new players to get in every year. Like the development is really hard. And then you start to limit um, you start to limit what kind of players can play then that takes those players out. So then it makes it even harder. So like, yeah, you might be filling a team with uh, disabled athletes, but the level of athletes that you're able to take because of the, you know what, like you said, like it's a little bit of an unfair thing because of abilities in that, but this is really, to me, it's just very interesting. Like I was saying to Joe about just our, just how more inclusive we are as a society now. And like, we should be going forward, but we're going backwards. Yeah. I feel like a massive step well, I kind of understand where IPC is coming from in setting these standards for classification. So they have their 10 point, whatever it is. Be you, you need some kind of guidelines. Otherwise, what's the difference between the Paralympics and the Olympics? You know, it's high performance athletes competing. So those are the guidelines that are guiding them to make these decisions. But I do disagree with having just a carte blanche guideline that for every sport in the games this is what classifies you this is what defines you as a disabled athlete what they got to do is look at each individual sport as george mentioned like swimming well you can't have single leg amputees going swimming against um you know paraplegics like they can't use their legs how fair is that it's not so you'd end up having for a, a hundred meter or whatever length it is 14 15 16 different disciplines within that same with track events but wheelchair basketball is very different than that because we're all competing on the same time that's what our classification enables us to do so when george sits in a chair he's no different than you are brad but you're two and a half points george is four and a half we got to work together figure it out how we're going to play as a team together mm -hmm. with 14 points on the floor and that's what makes us unique so to be able to paint us with the same brush that you paint athletics or swimming or any other sport at the paralympics it's wrong and obviously based on this decision in my opinion it doesn't work i just my biggest grievance is i, I mean i know your opinions are joey and, and i agree with you of the fact that if you just open it up sort of thing i don't think it's necessarily i watched it yesterday there isn't going to be a million people that up there able-bodied that can then even put in the work to become the, what it takes to be an elite athlete. But the Paralympics is excluding disabled athletes. Yeah. Like that's yeah, well, there's multiple arguments there. And that, that's kind of where yesterday was getting. I, I, the focus I want right now is to be on athletes like yourself that are being excluded. You have no other option right yeah. now. And yet you're being excluded. You could open this up even further. Like I kind of did yesterday and say like, what if we just open it up to able bodies? Yeah. But to me, that's a whole other point. Yeah, um, but yeah, we, we can digress and go there if you want. But <laughs> on George, we got a pretty face on camera here. So I think the biggest the biggest thing, one of the bigger things too, is just I don't know, like the people that are making these decisions need to realize just how affected the athletes are. Like when I got injured and some of the stuff that went down after that, and the way that I felt, like I went through major depression. Like I had it's not fun. Yeah. Your your identity is gone. You know, like you spend your whole life getting to the most elite level of, of your respected sport. And then I couldn't imagine like to not even be able to get the, the, to put that work in and not even be able to keep going down that path. Like you've clearly started a career and built on, on, you know, like your skill set and all that and became a, a good player. And, you know, you've got your future ahead of you, but like to think that 
somebody could turn around and do that. I don't even know how I would, I would handle that. I mean, I've had injuries before and I know that that's not easy, but I just think like we talk about athlete centered sport programs and how we're going to treat athletes in the future. And we're all learning about how a lot of these people in positions of power were treating other people and all this stuff. And, uh, I just, I just hope like through doing this kind of stuff and talking about it, like what Joey did yesterday and your articles and that, that people realize like, um, it affects you. Like it's, we're not just happy to participate as athletes. I'm not just happy to get out there and, and get active and be a part of sport and good for me. Like, no, I played cause I wanted to just to, to be one of the best in the world and represent my country. And that was my identity. And it was taken in a, in a really hard way for me. And that, put me through hell and it didn't have to be that hard. Um, you know, it could be just telling somebody what's up or a phone call or this or that or whatever. And I just think just Dave's situation, like the discrepancy, I mean, you could argue it till the cows come home if he should be allowed to play or not, regardless the way that they let him know, I felt was very uh, disrespectful because they should have let him know cool. and uh, at least had some kind of compromise to carry out the end of his season in a way that he could be, he could bow out with it, even yeah. bringing attention to it. So he could still carry out being a Paralympic athlete and use his legacy to kind of build on in the future. So he was a flag bearer, wasn't he? <laughs> in yeah. Rio. yeah. It makes I, you look bad. You just made this guy like the your poster boy. Yeah. And now you're saying like, like if you, because they're saying that they, it went from, they changed it from four centimeters or whatever it was to eight now or, or something like that. Or something like that. Yeah or six or something like that is the max. But what if somebody's got a five? What if someone's five? That's pretty bad. Wouldn't it yeah. be bad to walk on that and try to play basketball with that kind of dis discrepancy? Where's, yeah, where's the science time. behind these decisions? Take a guy out with the discrepancy and watch him play and, and gauge like how much pain he's in or, you know, like where's the, uh, like some of this. The it does have to be a line, but I feel like we, like you said earlier, we are. It's being made too restrictive. Like you're excluding people that are clearly eligible to play this sport because uh, they can't do anything else. Yeah, it does have to be a line, and I completely agree with the classification system. Like it does have to be something. You have to go through a process, and you have to do that. But we're active. Well, we the IPC's rules actively remove people who don't fit into their their regulations. Which but what I, are they? Um, how do they decide it though? Do they just sit by and watch you guys play and then go, man, that guy looks a little bit too good to be, uh, you know, like, because nobody, nobody like complains, that. right, about guys? Yeah, I wish they could look at me like that. I don't think anyone's looked at me and gone, he's a little too good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why Jerry stopped. <laughs> I think that's why I did. Yeah. I, I don't know what the process was, honestly. I, maybe George does. I, I don't know. But um, from what, what I understand is their meetings, and, but they just talk about sport generally. It wasn't about any specific sport. It's not like they sat down and said, okay, wheelchair basketball, uh, these are the guidelines we want. Uh, swimming, these are the guidelines we want. It was like, okay, the Paralympics, these are the guidelines we want. You have to have some major impairment um, in their eyes. And obviously, George and the dings of the world didn't meet that yeah. requirement. I just, it's like, it, I think it'd be really good if the association that runs the sport could decide what. <laughs> What? Uh, who knows the sport? IPC doesn't know the ins and out of every sport. Exactly. There's too many. Like, wouldn't it be good if each sport had an association that could regulate who can play it? That'd yeah. be a really good idea, I think. Yeah. It's... I'm getting. I just can't. Honestly, I've I've been losing my mind for about five days about it. <laughs> well, I, I did see an interview or a statement released by one of the IPC board members, and I don't know names, and I, I don't. I'm not going to direct quote it, but it. There's something along the lines like uh, wheelchair basketball's got to fall in lines. This is like having the Bundesliga not follow FIFA's guidelines. I'm like, no, that's exactly what this is not. <laughs> the wheelchair basketball was following IWS guidelines. Yeah. It's IPC that, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, you don't have um, the Olympic uh, committee interfering with individual sports in their games. And I understand the Paralympics are a little different, where we do have to have guidelines, as I said before. With, What's the difference between the Olympics and Paralympics? Well, the Paralympics are made for people with physical impairments of some sort. So, but you can't, to me, you can't look at this as just sports. Wheelchair basketball is unique in its own right. So you have to look at each sport individually. And that's where I think the issues really come from is that you try to just sweep every sport with one brush and like, okay, if you're not meeting this standard, you're no, 
no good to us. And <laughs> I always, I always found rugby kind of weird because like nobody ever argued that or said, hey, like it's kind of unfair that I can't play rugby. I feel like nobody's just ever really stood nobody's... up to the IPC. I mean, from the mess some of the messages I've had of people that in other sports, so obviously this this change came in earlier, and they just sort of took it and they they've said they didn't dare say anything about it or didn't think there'd be any use saying anything about it. And that's like Joey has said before, the issue we need to be consulted with the individual sports. Like you said, like rugby, like if you think of it logically, like why can't you work out a system so that other people can be involved with it? Why can't yeah. you work? I, I get it that it's for mainly like quad, quadriplegics and things like that mm -hmm. and like their sort of sport, but they'd be able to work out a system where you can work yeah. out, like you can include something. And I, f I feel like that's the route that has to go down. I mean, I've been pretty vocal of my annoyance and stuff like that, but it's just communication that's needed. We need like, to sit down and talk. I just feel like we've all just for years and years of, of just accepted the discrimination kind of from rugby because it's just that's the system that we use and it makes sense to most of us because, like you said, the quadriplegic, yeah. uh, like it just works. It's a sport that works so well for, for people with certain injuries like that too. And and I don't know what it would be like if you had more uh, like – a more range of diff different disabilities, but like we never said anything about it. We never complained about that being unfair. It's just now this is starting to af affect other athletes and the changing stuff is like, so are you going to change the rugby rules next year without telling anybody? Like would they, would their organization do that? So like, that would be pretty crappy to do that, but I don't I know. As well. Like I think Joe, no, obviously Nobody in wheelchair basketball has a problem with classification of people. Not fours and four fives. The bigger talk is all the like what your local yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. nobody, you're a minimal disability. You're the most maximum penalty to play. You can basically only play one of you on the court. Nobody's got an issue with that. Yeah. The, yeah. the issue internally is more about the mids of where where, where people should be classified. Yeah, so, it's ironic you say that because I've talked to uh, a few of our low point players here in Canada, and they're like, "No, oh, we want as many fours and four fives in our program as possible because that's how I get on the court." Yeah. <laughs> low pointer. It's yeah. all the mid pointers that are you know playing as two fives, and in my opinion, should be three fives <laughs> that yeah. are, are screwing up the system. Yeah. But that's that's an internal problem for yeah. uh, WBF. That, that has nothing to do with IPC or anything. No, yeah, that's our own problem that we have. Yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, about how I how I made myself a little bit weaker on my class <laughs> so i guess i'm a part of the problem guys sorry but it's, it's you it's pretty... you're all part of this <laughs> you're to blame for georgia's inability yeah. to go to paralympics now <laughs> yeah. my dream's gone because you flopped a little bit when it's to be a super yeah sorry <laughs> well, there's nobody cracking down on that you know yeah, I... there's nobody on the sidelines going he couldn't do that four hours ago when i just <laughs> classified him what nobody goes back on it nobody nobody could like to me, in the system, if, if 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 say like four different national teams saw you play and they were like, we don't think he's quite disabled enough, they could uh, they could complain, right, and make an, uh, some kind of appeal or they yeah, could do something. The situation with that is every team has people that there's you, there can be, so you're never going to kick up a fuss because I feel like it'd be a tit for tat thing if someone starts that sort of situation. Yeah. Like, I don't think that he should be in there. Be like, well, you've got a few of these that are a bit questionable that. So it's kind of that side of things are kind of ignored. But as Joey's alluded to, it's the most inclusive sport there is in, in the Paralympics from mm -hmm. high spinal break up into minimal disability. Yeah. Like you all play together. Um, that is what is a better better thing for the Paralympics brand and mottos that they have is than that. Mm -hmm. And they're just completely tearing it apart. Yeah, you know, I've been involved in this sport for many years, and uh, honestly, in all my years, I, I can't think of anyone ever complaining about someone not being disabled enough at the Paralympics. I'm talking here. Mm -hmm. I, I've been to six Paralympic games now, and I, I can't recall any conversation where someone's like, "What the heck is this guy doing here? You know, he, he's not disabled." But internally within the basketball community, there's tons of chatter about what this guy's a two five. I mean, he's playing like he's a four. He, he's yeah. a Three, man, he should be a two. That happens all the time. And I think that's the competitiveness of us. But not once can I think of a conversation where, well, look at this guy walking and he's not disabled. He shouldn't be here. We should it's never never comes up. Yeah. Nobody's ever got a problem. The players never have an issue. Nope. It's always like somebody else that's not a player that like goes, Oh well, what can I do? <laughs> Usually an outsider. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for making decisions to make the sport 
progress, but clearly there's something going on here. Maybe. Well, things yeah. naturally evolve, and I think you know, if you're if you're standing still, you're you're falling behind, kind of thing, right? So you have to naturally evolve. But right now, I think we're going backwards. <laughs> you know, like we're not learning yeah. how to work anymore. We're going back into the water, becoming the tadpole thing again, whatever. Yeah, it would. It it would have even been kind of easy. It would have still sucked for future generations of athletes. Would have been really bad. And maybe that's something that you got to like that they really have to figure out. But even just to allow the the current athletes as is leave it alone as it is and then from there on move on and implement the new changes you know and at a minimum yes anything anything except stopping the current athlete <laughs> like it's uh, we yeah I've affected well I've affected GB and qualifying to things in world championships and thing and European championships to qualify so does that mean GB shouldn't be involved I'm an ineligible player they, they, what, well that, that's a great question because I've raised this a few times in uh some interviews I've done, like if, if I'm a team that was on the out, like use Poland from Europe, yeah. you know, they, they didn't qualify. Now my beef is hold on. GB did qualify, but now they have ineligible players that helped them get there. Like, Oh, we got to redo this now. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone get back to Poland. We're having another tournament. It's a legitimate argument. Like, of course, if I was on the other way around, I'd be going, well, they've qualified, but clearly they, sh I shouldn't have been playing. Like, <laughs> well, it happened here in the Americas as well. Like Canada qualified. We qualified. And David Ng was on our team. Uh, yeah. In like Argentina, very good team. Didn't qualify just on the out. Like, yeah. You know, I, I would be raising a stink if I was them. Yeah. So what do you guys want to see happen? Like, what would you like to be the, the best outcome right now? I can say the three, the sort of route that I'm going to go down. I've thought it all through what the plan will be. And speaking with some other athletes that have been excluded and this, Marika Millo is doing an unreal job the, from the German women's team who's been with, kind of with Joey, just you two from January, that have mm -hmm. been really behind this drum. And the first thing is, is to get it changed to this doesn't come until after Tokyo. That's the, fir that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. athlete, the, the athlete shouldn't be punished for this. Let them go. If you still want to put the rules in afterwards, okay. But then we have a new cycle to, to talk this out and, and decide. So that, that's my for the first thing that I'd do. And then after that, it'd be my own case of I want to be deemed eligible to play. And then after that, it's the the general pub, like not public, but the general people with impairments. We need to talk about that so that it doesn't affect anyone with an impairment. But that's obviously a lot harder to do because that is rule changes and regulations and that will take a longer, but we should at least be able to compete in Tokyo and we can, we can move on from there. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a no brainer. That first one. Mm -hmm. Especially, do you even know when is Tokyo going to, is it going? I haven't been well, following. Really. <laughs> it's coming, Corona's spiking again everywhere. So like, it might not go ahead. Like genuinely it might. There is a real risk of that. I, there is no way at the current point you can't get, I don't know how many million people travel to the city for, for a Paralympics and Olympics. There's no way on earth that can happen. Yeah. No well, way. I heard Tokyo is talking about uh, restricting fans. To yeah. Go. I don't know how well that's going to go because you got all these countries coming. Fans want to come watch their loved ones play and stuff like that. So, well, for their economy as well. I, I think for London in the UK, it was like a billion pounds it generated just for obviously the tourists and people coming in. Is it going to be worth Tokyo's time hosting it when they're not going to get they'll probably lose more money than they would yeah, make? They lose a lot more money than they already have. So there's that's the sort of decisions that the IPC and they need to be focusing on, not <laughs> a little four point five and four pointers that are. I have something wrong with them and not letting them play. There's bigger issues ahead, like than than that. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. It's interesting though, because you, <laughs> to me, like I, as I'm getting older and I kind of understand different things, like, uh, that I used to do and not question, and now how I view them, like, so you're you're being affected because. There, somebody else is in control of of your life, basically, for us for a for a sport that's in the Paralympics, which really is really you're doing it just because it's your dream. Yeah. Like there's not you're not gonna you're not doing it because you're gonna get a big giant endorsement at the end. You're not doing it because you're gonna right. get a bonus. It's your dream. You want to achieve your dream. You want a gold medal, like any other person that gets into it for the right reason. And it's so weird because like you think about like limiting fans and stuff. Like that's like the one opportunity that you go to. Like that's the greatest. The greatest stage you'll ever get to play on with fans and that. So it's like everything's slowly changing right now. So it's like, like you said, even with the budgeting. So even more of a reason just to kind of hang back and chill out right now. 
just yeah. to see where things go, right? You know, but uh, I don't know. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to bring up or like you guys let her rip? And I don't really know much about the basketball world anymore, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think we've kind of touched on a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so we're mad. Yeah. We're, mad. Yeah. <laughs> we're angry. Yeah. I, I just don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to keep doing these things until I'm blue in the face because uh, I believe in this. I really believe this is unfair and unjust. And, you know, it'd be a shame if George never gets to experience a Paralympic Games because he's good enough. And not only is he good enough to be there, I think he's good enough to make an impact. And in a way, it, it's a, a shame. But I don't know what kind of impact we're going to have by doing this right and that's the frustrating part is like, like i said i will keep doing this i'll keep banging on doors and sending emails and stuff i just wish i would get a response or someone would say okay this is worth a sit down meeting now like let's get everyone in the room or on zoom and start discussing this because i'm not part of that i'm not a part of iwf i'm not a part of ipc so i just feel like as a former athlete or as a current athlete in george's case we have no freaking voice <laughs> you know, we, we're screaming from the mountaintops here and it's just falling on deaf ears well, the only people i hear from right now are current or former athletes well that's yeah. but as much as it has been sensationalized and stuff like that in the uk at least it's been sh this situation has been shoved into the forefront of it and not only my case there's some really reputable like newspapers and, and, and outlets that are discussing the Paralympic classification code as a whole, not even for, for basketball. Where is it getting us? Like, what, how come IPC hasn't released a statement saying, hold on, you know what? Yeah. You guys are wrong or you guys are right. We need to address like it's still falling on deaf ears. Oh, it is because, I mean, they've been contacted by so many news outlets and they've just released the same statement. We're sympathetic with George's case. But we have these code, codes for classification, but that's it. There's nothing. There's nothing to it. So I don't really know how. Well, I'm trying to work out a plan with people of how to go down that route and get some attention. Like, why well, we just need to sit down and a chat about the whole thing at a minimum. Just talk it, talk it out with decision makers that are there before yeah. Tokyo too, because I know they're yeah. planning on meeting at Tokyo and after Tokyo. But that does you no good. Does none of the athletes any good? What if after? What if I get an injury and Tokyo was my only only chance to go to it? Then it gets taken away from that. Like it has to be before. Like you can't. Just everything about it's just so nice. Like, we're saying backwards. It's just so. Yeah. What's going on with uh, Elfie? Elfie Hewitt. Is it? Yeah. Is he going to Tokyo? He's going to Tokyo, and then after Tokyo is when it kicks in. Brett, that's a tennis player from GB that has the same hip disease as I have, and he's been deemed ineligible post Tokyo now from tennis. Stevie Welsh, same thing, same hip disease. So, it, oh really? I sent Elfie a message on Facebook. I wasn't friends with him. I didn't, never even met him, but I haven't heard back from him or anything. But just like it, that, it breaks my heart to think that yeah. this shit can happen. Well, the thing that that's funny about what what's getting your your story traction is your comment about wanting to amputate your leg that that seems really unreal to people that don't you know and it's like what but i from the sledge world i know i know players that have done that you know like oh you don't qualify for worlds you need to fuse your ankle it's it, there's too much yeah. movement boom go get a surgery fuse their ankle just so they can play sledge where there's not even a classification system and this guy's got a blood condition where he was actually risking dying getting the surgery so there's some kind of thing that could have happened so it's like is it going to get to the point where like you need to go and amputate your leg and then you get an infection and die trying to be classified? Like how bad is this going to get? Like, yeah. just like, let's, let's figure this out. So people aren't harming themselves in a way. Like, let's I'm find out where too disabled is to play elite sport and then go, just keep it there. Yeah. You know, cause uh, I'm seeing people do dangerous things. That's why when I read your article, I was like, no, I believe that you might, there's probably a little bit of truth to that. But, I'll just put some context in for that because yeah. <laughs> you know, for people that listen. So I, I could have had it amputated when I was younger. Like it's a legitimate option for, for, for my condition. I chose not to. Uh, I was kind of going through with the risks and then a lot of other stuff in life as going through as a 13, 14-year-old. You can't really chuck that on top of it. So 
I'm not saying that if all avenues are exhausted, I'm going to be like, yeah, get it off. I'm just saying that, like, what's the world coming to when I have to, that thought even comes into my head? Like, what's wrong with the system for me to even think that? Mm-hmm. But that would be a lifestyle thing because I've only got 10 years of my career left, like, probably. So if that goes off, it's not going to grow back when I finish. So, yeah. Like, I, I can, my opinion is I wouldn't cut your leg off. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> you won't believe how many people have messaged me that. And it's like, <laughs> I do know, <laughs> like, I'm not just flouting it there. It is a consideration. It, it is, it is there. But I'm glad that it's gotten the attention of people because this issue really does need to be, like up and as I've said in my interviews, it's it, I'm not the first person that's done it. Like you've said, like this happens. Mm-hmm. People have done these sort of things. So we should be more outraged that it has happened, not that it, that it could do in my case. Like people have done this mm-hmm. and nothing's ever been said about it. Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully by us just talking about it and getting together and keeping it on everyone's Facebook wall and in the media and stuff and and uh Good to just let people know that you disagree with their decisions now and then. And I'm sure that they'll, I'm sure that I have a feeling that everyone's being heard. And I think that they realize that I'm sure it'll work itself out somehow. I really do. Um, Especially with, you know, got Joey supporting the movement too. And like, I, as much as I'm not a basketball player, like anymore, but this is about basketball. It's yeah general Paralympic sport it's not even specific to, to that because there's people that have missed out in other sports like archery shooting for, for different disabilities and this uh, sort of thing it's not even everyone that put, with a disability mm-hmm. has, a voice, has a voice on this has well, I, asked, I read one of your interviews there and it, like, this is bigger than me <laughs> this, this isn't just about <laughs> Now that's our like my focus are the guys I know and the guys I care about and with the sport I care about. But you're absolutely right that something's wrong in our system when people are being excluded that should definitely be included. Yeah. Well, it just sucks because in order to be a Paralympic athlete and be a successful elite athlete, it takes so much compromise and so much sacrifice and dedication, right? That you almost don't even have a chance to really build. Like I didn't even go to college till I was like 27. Yeah, because nice. so you don't have time to do all these things to build for yourself then you commit all this time like you have been doing and then all of a sudden there's a decision like this like what's going to stop a decision like this from being made again that's going to affect somebody else who's built their entire life on this like dave 20 years or however year, many years or whatever right um and then just change it like there has to be something in place to, to protect those players because it's too much of a financial burden it's too much of a just a stress and I know what it's like being an athlete that can't really compete at the highest level anymore. And it sucks, let alone to be told that you can't just because of a rule. Mine was an injury. I couldn't imagine someone just making that decision. I'd be pissed. So I really hope that people just continue to voice their opinions and find a way. I'm sure there's somebody over there that's probably going to be able to come up with some ideas if, if, if they just hear the right people and sit down and and have a conversation. And I'm sure they've read your articles and, (laughs) <laughs> I'm pretty sure that PR team have sure gotten some emails. So, but yeah, yeah they, might, they might have had a, a busy few few but days. Good, good on, but good on. How old are you? You're uh, 21. Just how old? 26. 26. Oh, you're young. <laughs> I've got a baby face. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm, 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 I'm growing this beard. You guys both got beards. I've been growing this for 26. Do you years. think this is a beard? Well, it's more than I can do. I'm so trying to hide it in the stream here. Like. <laughs> well, yeah, I do. But good, good for you for you know what there are a lot of a lot of us. I, I'm guilty of it at times, and I, I'm maybe even Joey too. Like you voiced up, man. You stepped up, and you you went right to the media, and you fought for what you want. And uh, props to you for for showing some of us, you know, how to go about, you know. I, I would take that one step further, Brad, too. And I, I would like to encourage, if not challenge, other athletes out there right now. You have a voice use it this is the only way we're going to see change uh, whether you agree or disagree whatever just voice your opinion out there let let people know uh where we stand with all this mm-hmm. so i appreciate it for sure man but uh yeah i i think this went really great i don't even i don't know what more there is to say unless you guys have anything else you want to add to twitter Instagram, you guys want to plug your Instagrams? Well, your- if anyone wanted to sign my petition, it is on my Instagram, which is uh, George Bates 94 if anyone wanted to. And that is a petition not for me personally. It's for 
a review of the whole Paralympic classification code. What do we have for signatures? Uh, we just passed 12,000 in three days. So yeah. it's not been too, too bad, really. It's, it's good. growing up. Well, that was great. I don't think there's anything more that we need to touch on. But we'll. No, uh, it was good. I'm glad you're getting yeah, your. I'd like to much. do more of these and see where you're at in the next uh, couple months. And yeah. I'll be following along with you guys. I will be in touch with Joey. I'm sure he'll, he'll let me know what's going on. But also, awesome. thank you. Yeah, perfect, guys. Thanks a lot for, for taking the time. And uh, I'll, I'll post this in the next little while. All right. Say hi to the family, George. Yeah, I will do. Thanks very much, guys. All right. See you.